get women out of man, you get men out of fool man. Because she was the one that fashioned that intelligence. The very young brain is being fashioned, shaped, and molded inside of her womb. Okay. All right, greetings, everybody. Greetings. Black power. Black power. Okay. Um, I want to welcome everybody to the House of Consciousness on the West Coast. Um, but first thing I want to do is uh, give praise and honor to our ancestors. Uh, and of course, all praise is due to the Great Mother. Um, you know I'm the son of Sekhmet. So I, um, Sekhmet is the direct lineage and deity that I honor the most. Okay, so with that being said, we're going to pour some libations, right? Right. And then um, we're going to call out some names. Om Sekhmet, Ashe. Om Kalima, Ashe. Om Asa, Ashe. Om Pata, Ashe. Om Ase, Ashe. Okay, uh, and if you have anybody that's in your family that may have went to the other room, this is the time for you to call on them. Rosie Lee. Who? Rosie Lee. Ashe. 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 My dad, Dennis. Ashe. My father. Ashe. My stepfather, Willie, and uh, my aunt, Georgia. Ashe. So, with that being said, again, let me reintroduce myself. Y'all know me, but this is for the people out there in the YouTube and around the world. My name is Natri Tahuti, a.k.a. the son of Sekhmet, the bad boy of consciousness. And my new a.k.a. Tupac Shakur. <laughs> you the West Coast, nigga. Black cop. <laughs> so, <clears throat> what we're going to do here today is, this is not a lecture, by the way, to the YouTubers. This is... Uh, Members, the, some of the new members of the House of Consciousness, and this is like our grand opening. I mean, although we already started, we want the people to see the vision that we have. Um, and of course, we want to thank first and foremost the Queen Amanette. So we're going to give Queen Amanette a hand. <laughs> because without the Queen, this wouldn't be possible. So I want it to be known that. Queen Amanette allowed me to utilize this facility. So we have to honor that. We have to honor that and insist it because she allowed us into her home and allowed us to have this particular facility and this will be ours. And when I mean ours, it's not mine. It's not, it's, it's, it belongs to the House of Consciousness. And if you are a member of the House of Consciousness, then this is your place too. This is the place where you can come and we can get busy. We're going to brainstorm here. This is our think tank right here in Tacoma, Washington. Tacoma stand up, Seattle stand up, LA stand up, the whole fucking West Coast stand up. Rolling. You heard? All my Crips, all my Bloods, all my folk, everybody, everybody out there banging, gods and earth, nation of Islam, um, the, the black Hebrew Israelites, man, we including all of our families. We are going to take this conscious community to a whole nother direction. So the world is going to be looking in on us, okay? So... And I thought it was very important to begin our discussion with black power. Right? Because a lot of people don't know what black power is. You know, we got brothers out there, um, and you know I say his name, Brother Polite, talking about black power don't work. You know? But this term was coined by one of our ancestors. Right? Who knows who the term was coined by? Anybody? Marcus Garvey, you say who? I would say, um... Uh, <laughs> I mean, um, Alright, we don't know, it's okay. 
I would say, I would say, Huey P. Newman. Huey Huey P. Newman. You? Anybody? Kwame Ture. Kwame Ture. Okay. What about you, Preach? Um, Stokely. There you go. Kwame Stokely. That's who the term was coined by. Yeah. Right, same person. My bad. So that's right because once he made his his transition from America to Africa, he became what's his name? Kwame Ture. Kwame Ture. You see, a lot of people don't know that. And he went over into Africa, which we're going to be discussing that. But we're going to be talking about America. We're going to be talking about revolution. Stay here, build this country, or go to Africa, Exodus, you know what I'm saying to you? So, we're going to begin with this discussion of black power. So, let's get straight into it. Okay, black power, what does it mean? How does it look? And how do we achieve it? This is the name of our discussion, okay? And of course, we know these are the symbols <coughs> that we know it by. Symbolism is very important, okay? Symbolism is connected to our spirituality because your brain operates in symbols. This is what our ancestors knew. Our ancestors knew that the brain recorded pictures because in the very beginning of time, or the, as far back as we know, there wasn't a written communication system. The communication system was through sounds and through symbols and gestures. You see, so that even goes back into the very origin of Freemasonry. You see, signs, symbolism, because our ancestors knew and understand how the brain worked. And so the symbols that you see, because, you know, Brother Polite says that, you know, throwing your fists up in the air, you know, that shit don't work. And I'm here to tell y'all today how it works. See, we've been misdirected and we, 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 we misunderstand what this actually means. You see, so, and that's all we have to do is now realign ourselves back with the symbolism and the ritual of throwing your fist in the air. Right? Everybody put your fist in the air. Right? Black power. Black, black power. power. Right, take your fist out there. Say black power. Black, black, black power. power. See the difference? Yeah. Throw your fist in the air. Black power. You understand what I'm saying? You, see, when you throw the fist up in the air, something else takes place. You see what I'm saying? You, we're gonna get into that. So let's go straight up into it. Does black power look like this? Right? So, in our very early stages of trying to redevelop ourselves here in this country, we began to take on a look like this. Right? Back in the 60s. You see that, well, that's a powerful image of that black woman. You see the black woman, she got a gun in her goddamn hand. You understand what I'm saying? And then you see that they have the black woman as the epicenter of this particular picture. And then the brothers are around that sister. You see what I'm saying? You. So we have to understand, yes, this is what black power looks like. You see? But we have to look beyond with the two physical eyes, and we gotta begin to look at what does that mean? You see, what it means is that real black men are in a position to circumvent and circum circumambulate the queen. You know what circumambulate is? When the Muslims go around the Kaaba, they go around the Kaaba seven times. And we'll talk about that. And I'll tell you why they go around the Kaaba seven times. Because the Kaaba, many centuries ago, many thousands of years ago, before the Islamic regime that is there now, for thousands of years and for as long as anyone could remember, the Kaaba was not only the Kaaba, but it was the name of the spiritual system. See, the word Kaaba is not an Arabic word. This is what a lot of people don't know. Really, there's no such thing as Arabic and Hebrew and none of that. Those are just different dialects, and they came out of the metal metal. There are cursive, uh, these are cursive 
languages. And that particular language came from the ancestors in Kimi. You see, so the, the Kaaba is not an Arabic word. That is a word that they borrowed from the Africans who were in Mecca. They were there. And so the Kaaba was known as the belly button of the goddess Alat. You know, and right there on the northeast corner, on the northeast corner was her yoni. And that's what you see the Muslims, they have a black stone in there. And you see the Muslims go in there, and that's like the most precious part of the whole ritual where they go in there and they try to kiss the, it's in an oval shape, it looks like a womb. And then the black stone looks like the head of a child coming out of that. You see? And what's, why, why, why is that so important? Because, you know, when, we was, when I was in the nation of gods and earth, via through the nation of Islam, they said that Allah created himself in the stage of the triple darkness. Right? So the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, take your magnifying glass and look out and look at these little atoms. He said they're egg shaped. Right? He said that Allah created himself from the womb of the universe. He said he was in triple darkness. So now let's understand what that means. See, the question must become this. If Allah was in triple darkness, the womb of space, the question becomes what womb, whose womb? See? So if he began in the womb, this gives us understanding that the womb was always here. The womb is the triple darkness. The triple darkness is symbolic to the triple goddess. Okay? So that triple darkness, let's define that. You're talking about dark matter. We're talking about dark energy. And then the third is called prana. Prana. Prana is the life force. That is the life force. And those are the three stages of the triple darkness that everything within this universe came out. That is the womb. If you, if you, when you look at a black woman's womb, the black woman's womb is the very essence of creation. And this is why she was the first biological, cosmological manifestation of the divine. And then we came from that. We was made manifested in her womb, and we came out of her womb, the divine black body who was also God. You see what I'm saying? So we are the gods. And so don't let nobody tell you, oh, that, you know, you being God is, you know, like childish. You know, I hear Professor Larry, that's mm -hmm. my boy, when he said, you know, these terms are childish. That's because these people don't know and understand what's happening. They don't understand language. They're doing research, but you gotta understand the mess that we have been putting. And that's why you hear the Moors talking about the word black. And they say that the word black is a, is a legal status. And nobody yet in the Moors community, and this is not an attack at the Moors. I love the Moors. Excuse me, and I forgot to include them that, yes, we unifying with the Moors as well. I forgot that, so I apologize on that. But I love the Moors. Those are my brothers and my sisters. But we're talking about the scholarship. We're talking about the research. Nobody has yet been able to show me in Black Law's Dictionary the definition of black being a legal status. Mm -hmm. That's what I want you to show me. They continue to tell me that black is a legal status, but I want you to show me the definition of black in Black Law's di uh, Dictionary and show me the definition that black is a legal status. That's what you're going to have to do. <clears throat> but to get a little further and let's understand what has happened. Um, just about the close of the 15th to 16th century, there was a campaign via the Catholic Church, okay, and they went on their crusade to begin to take over the world. Europeans began to go around to take over the world. They were looking for resources, right? They were going to people's lands, not only taking resources. See, resources is just not the raw materials of the ground. They were also taking people's information. See, knowledge is food. See what I'm saying? You, in the nation of God's nurse, we said in the 12 Jews of Islam, one of the degrees is food. 
That's the seventh degree, food. And so food is just not physical food. Food is also a mental and spiritual diet. See, because what you put in here, your mind, you understand what I'm saying? You What you eat through your physical eyes and through the, the, the application of study and research, this is your life blood. This is the life food because through what you are studying, what and it becomes the way you think. And the way you think, it becomes who you are or what you are trying to manifest. So it is very important that we keep our food black power. Black power. So again, this is what black power looks like. You know what I'm saying? You know the brother said, oh, you, you know you, I mean, you don't got to dress up that way. I just want, but see, what we want to do is we, we want to show you that with the woman centered, this is the way we are to achieve power again. Because if we are not inclusive of the woman as an equal, not no goddamn subservient, secondary, but most necessary, no. We are the gods. The term goddess is generic and it does not pontificate the fundamental meaning of God. See, God suggests that she's secondary. And how the hell is the woman secondary when you gotta come out of her womb? You understand what I'm saying? She is the first God. She's the first mother. The first teacher. You understand what I'm saying? Because she represents the womb of space, the triple darkness. And that came first. You understand what I'm saying? So yes, this is what black power looks like. And so we have to look into this picture and pictures speak to you uh, psychically. Because we have to look into this. One picture tells a thousand different stories. You understand what I'm saying to you? So real quick, just about the close of the 15th, going into the 16th century, um, they also went on an effort to begin to change the definitions of words. They took out the literal meanings of words and began to change the words and began to give you what is called connotative linguistics. Mm -hmm. Connotative linguistics is other than the literal meaning. See, there are two meanings to words. There's the connotative meaning, and there's the, the denotative meaning. The denotative meaning is the actual meaning of the word. And so they went on an effort, and as a matter of fact, because I have it written down, it's in here, uh, as evidence of, this, of the, this conclusion, a clear link to the Vatican's role stands out in two papal declarations put forth during the last half of the 15th century. The first was issued in 1452 when Pope Nicholas V gave direct permission to King Alfonso of Portugal to invade, search out, capture, enslave, vanquish, and subdue all people who were not under the auspices of Christ. So, it was during that time when they began to write us out of the history books and they began to change the meanings of words. Let me show you how Europeans change the meanings of things. All they did, they take what's positive and powerful and turn it around. Like the swastika, right? If you, if you show a swastika to a Jew, a so-called Jew, he'll say, he'll call you an anti-Semitic. But little do he know, the swastika was a divine emblem. Came out of Swaziland. It, it was the union of the black man and the woman on one level. But it's also the union of the four cardinal points, fire, air, earth, and water, symbolized by the four sons of Horus. Right? So, uh, but if you tell that to a Jew, he'll call you anti-Semitic. Why? Because Hitler, uh, did a job on these people. And Hitler took the symbol of the swastika and made that his emblem. And so he infused into the swastika a connotative meaning, mm -hmm. as opposed to the real denotative meaning. Just like when we go into the word nigger. Yeah. Nigger is a very, the English variant, or the English slang of the word negro. 
And the word Negro comes from the Latin, which is Negro, right? So this is the first time in human history that this particular word, de uh, well, you can't say Dino, connotes color, or, or, or the word black, or black people. You see, because before then, when we take it back through our etymology, we can go into the word Naga, Negus, Negus. Uh, the, the Chinese had the symbol of the serpent. That's why the word snake, the word snake, see the S was the symbol of the serpent. When you take the S off, you have the word Naki. See, that's the Naki. But they put the S on it because the S is the symbol of the serpent. You have Inger and you have Nectar. So you have all of these words that is the actual denotative value of the word. The denotative value of the word nigger or negro or negron or negro is the serpent god or the serpent king. And the serpent is symbolic to what? The kundalini energy. Mm -hmm. Right? And what is the kundalini? That's the goddess. You see? That's the feminine. That's the divine feminine. And that was, the, that was what they were going around doing taking the divine feminine out of the spiritual system because when they took that out, they took out your battery pack. Mm. You see, so it became the, the holy homosexual trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You see? You saw, and as opposed to it representing life, now it represents death. So let's move on. So again, you know, very important to understand words. See, what they did was they made the dictionary. And so they began to define words. This is what you need to know about etymology. In etymology, you have prefixes, suffixes, words, excuse me. In, in language, you have the prefix, you have the suffix, and then you have the root word. The root. Now, let's look at the word define. The word D means what? Take away. So the word fine or finite comes from the word finit. So instead of saying define, we're saying infine. The infinition of a word is the denotative value of what they're calling denote. You understand what I'm saying? The literal meaning of the word. Because through the literal meaning of the word, infinity is achieved. Because again, through words, we are beginning to, through language, languages which is an art, that we use to communicate with one another. And the more articulate and the more information that we have about language and current events through history and so forth and so on, we are able to go into a state of mind called understanding. And from, which is the preliminary state to overstanding. And then from overstanding, we begin to understand. So this is all third eye pineal gland interaction. This is all soul transference. See, from words, from symbols, we are transferring uh, psychic information to feed the soul. So this is why knowledge is power and knowledge is food. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, okay. Uh -oh, did I do the right thing? I'm going back. It's okay. It's okay. 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 Put you in positive spells 
or negative spells. Our ancestors had spells for everything. Ritual spells. Spell is just basically spelling the words. Understanding how the words are put together. So again, they have people under the spell of connotative meanings because they took the literal denotative value of the word out. So now, only if you understand etymology will you be able to break the spell. The average individual knows anything about etymology. You know, um, and so the etymon, which is the root word of etymology, means the root origin of a word. So that means it's the denotative value. So again, let me make a disclaimer, I'm not attacking the Moorish brothers, but I want to say this. Either you're being disingenuous or there's a misunderstanding of the etymology. Because I hear the Moors all the time say that the word black in etymology means pale. Right? So they're only telling you partial truth. It's not the whole truth. Because right here, you can go online, etymology dictionary, or you can go get your Oxford dictionary, Oxford etymology, and you'll find out. So from the etymology, from the old English, it's the word blank. Right? And sometimes I mispronounce words, but I know what the hell I'm talking about. That's for my critics. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, that's for my critics. They say I mispronounce words. You know what I'm saying? They say I don't have a degree. Look, we can give our own people degrees. The sisters call me Dr. Natural Tahuni. And I and in the beginning, I didn't accept the term. But after a while, I said, wait a minute, why am I going to stare a gift a, a horse gift in the mouth? In the mouth. The sisters gave me the title, so I'm going to wear the goddamn title. Because what am I doing? We're healing the minds of our people. Mm -hmm. So the word blink, blink, blink. It means dark. Right? So here's the root. Dark from the proto-dramatic black as, black as. You know, and if you, you know, help me with the pronunciation, black as. Burnt. It means burnt. From the Old Norse, blacker, dark. The Old High German, blah, black. Right? The sweetest black ink, Dutch black ink, to burn from the Proto-Indo-European black. To burn, gleam, shine, flash. So it has several meanings. It means to burn, to gleam. Maybe we need to define what those mean. Go deeper into the word gleam. Because we see it the first uh, word is burn, to shine. So does shine mean bright? Well, black can be bright in another sense. See, we got to understand language. What does it mean by shine? And what does it mean by flash? You see? From the Greek, Phlegian. Thank you, my brother. Phlegian. To burn. Scorch. From the Latin, help me out with that one, y'all. Flaggery. Flaggery, right? <coughs> to blaze, glow, burn. From the root, blab. Blab. Right? Meaning to shine, flash, burn. And so, from that word, also you get the word bleach. Bleach comes from out of the root of black and the rest of these words. And so this is what the morals are saying, that bleach meaning pale. Mm -hmm. The same root produced the old English black, bright, shining, glittering, pale. Mm -hmm. Right? The connecting notions between perhaps fire, Bright and burnt and burnt. So there's a connection between fire, meaning bright and burnt. Okay? The usual Old English word for black was swart. 
swerved or swamped. According to the old English definition, in Middle English, um, it is often doubtful whether black, black, blake means black, dark, or pale, colorless, so forth and so on. Right? So now we can see from the etymology of the word that somebody is being disingenuous. Because although, yes, there is the pale in the word from the word bleach, or uh, it would be from bleak or bleak, we can see that there is a, 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 a denotative value for pale, but glittering. But see, these words need to be further defined by what does it mean by that pale or glittering or blaze to glow or burn, to gleam or shine or flash. But we can understand from the, from the black, it means dark. So now, we have just broken that argument. Now, this argument is on the table for discussion. That's to my Morris brothers. This argument is on the table for discussion. You're going to have to show us the empirical data to show forth and prove that it just means bell. And now they also say that it means death. Okay? And we're going to get into that too. Now, let's pray that this damn thing continues to work. We just had temporary difficulties. Alright, get me thoughts. So now, here are all the ancient words that denote the word black. Our ancestors called themselves black through other meaning. Because in the name of Saul, the meaning of Asar is the Lord of the perfect black. Black represents our connection to our creatrix creator, one to another. From cosmic or spiritual perspective, in fact, the nature of blackness and the people who are black, as Lao Tzu said in the 6th century BCE, is unfathomable. Blackness is what links us as one humanity. It also connects us to one universal consciousness that we call God. So, the ancestors seeing that blackness was connected directly to the very origin and the essence of life, that which we call God. Peace and black power, family. It's your brother YG Preach representing the West Coast House of Consciousness. We cut into the program for a brief intermission. Today we wanted to try something a little different. From here on out, the West Coast House of Consciousness will begin incorporating commercial breaks in between segments to allow brothers extra air time to market and promote their products. If you are a black owned business, we want to welcome and encourage you to contact us and send us your contact info as well as a brief bio about the products you wish to promote on our channel. We here at the West Coast House of Consciousness support black economics. We each have a part to play in building the black economy. So we want to do our part in spreading the word. One of the things that hinders our advancement as a people economically is our lack of awareness of established black businesses operating in our communities and abroad. The more aware we are of established black businesses and the products they sell, the more inclined we are to spend with them. So because we serve as a media outlet, we're going to do our part in spreading the awareness by promoting black businesses on our channel. So now I want to introduce to you the lines of Kim and Rock clothing. Man, it's a uh, clothing line run by my brother Montu Ra. As you can see, all kinds of different products, all types of different logos. Um, there's plenty more shirts. He got everything that you need. Um, he also does printing, press. So if you need anything printed, pressed up, any shirts, contact my brother. You can reach him at 509-594-1632. Also got a Facebook page. Follow him on Facebook at Lines of Kemet Ra. Um, if you want to purchase the items online, you could you could do that as well. Just go to www.linesofkemetrawstorenvy.com. So go out there, y'all. Get as many shirts, buy like 50 of them things. You know what I'm saying? Now I want to introduce y'all to my brother Minister. 
I'm finna play y'all a video. And the song you finna hear can be purchased on iTunes right here. As you can see, just search Minister. His music can also be found on Reverb Nation. He also got a mixtape out that can be found on datpiff.com. Follow my brother on Facebook at King Mini. Sit back, enjoy the video. Then after the video, we're going back to regularly scheduled program. Peace and black power. What's happening, man? It's King Mini, man. CEO of Mob Life Records, you did. I'm out here fucking around with my nigga YG Preach, man. About to get this video in. This one to grow, and it's been a long time coming. Niggas done been through a lot of shit. Y'all see me in this wheelchair, man. I was just recently uh, in an altercation about December a few months ago, shot and robbed and shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, paralyzed a little bit from the waist down, but I'm coming back, man. Doctors say I'll be walking and shit again. I'm putting in a lot of work, so y'all just keep y'all head up, man, and hold on, man. Keep them crackers out your business, and we gonna keep it coming, man. Mob Life Records, Minister, baby, King. Yeah, man. All my black folks, stand up, man. Stand up for me. If you proud to be black and you love where the fuck you come from, man, you keep your motherfucking head up, man. Let it be known. These motherfuckers will tell you anything, man, but I'm here to tell you, baby, you can be whatever the fuck you want to be, man. man. These cocksuckers don't run you, baby, you run yourself. Yeah. So keep it pushing, I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm a hustler, man. Right or wrong, I went at it alone. Yeah. Little nigga with a ball trying to flip to a zone. Even when I was dead broke, I always felt like a star. Bet I pull a hundred thousand out this man age job. The money was hella funny, I was born in the 80s. Ready Rock was turning children into Dauphine babies. Ronald Reagan ain't care about the Negro people. Jesse Jackson ain't no motherfucking hero neither with all that Operation Push shit. What? To be honest with you, that was all bullshit. That cocksucker was just trying to be the president. And Al Sharpton ain't no preacher, he's a fake pimp. Huey Newton kept it real, he tried to tell us right. You throw your fists in the air, you gotta fucking fight. George Bush can suck a dick, him and his fucking wife. My cousin killed the white boy, they gave my nigga life. Damn. But when the police kill a nigga, they just give him stripes huh. Paid leave and a vacation in paradise <laughs> Pick up a book and learn the law, cause if you don't, you finish Done. They got us paying for our freedom and this shit expensive what? Niggas always won't scream that big money shit yeah. Well, if you're ballin' while your kids on some bummy shit no, about- They told me we from the land of milk and honey shit Yeah, right, yeah, right. we from the land of Mr. Willie Lynch what? Read the letter, man, you gotta stack your cheddar, stack man your cheddar, Keep man. your head up, keep it grinding through the weather, man grinding, Stick man. together with we could do it so much better, man. And in the winter, we buy all the baby sweaters, man. We run the country, now they know we getting money now. We do it right, and we can turn this motherfucker out. They disrespect us, we gon' burn this motherfucker down. Show them how I feel to see a million niggas clown. They call us refugees, pussy, I was born here. I ain't sneak up in this country, I belong here. I done get it through the summer, I got on here. This where my mama buried at, you leave me alone here. They locked us up, and then they tell us that we wrong here. Yeah. Got a singer for our freedom, what a song here. Yeah. song yeah. right here, Yeah, nigga. The song here, you know what Same I'm talking about? Me, nigga, if you're the black minister, you're man. Proud, huh? yeah. They searching for Osama, where the bitch that killed my mom at. They murdered Lil Emmett Till and beat him with a carjack. 14 years old, what he do to really deserve that? Whistle at a white girl, they took his ass right off the map. Martin and Malcolm, Biggie and Pac, nah, I ain't forgot. Fuck John F. Kennedy, put one in his knot. Abraham Lincoln, too, fucking knock off his top. Kill him racist motherfuckers, leave their blood on the block. Matula Shakur, Nelson Mandela, free my people. We built this motherfucker, but we still ain't equal. Who the fuck I supposed to call when they on my ass? When they burning big crosses all on my grass. When they rape my great granny right in front of her kids. When the police slam a Nightstick right in my ribs. This ain't no bullshit, homie. Nah, this how it is. Better open up your eyes, boy. This serious be as soon as a nigga get rich, he wanna marry a white bitch. Mike Jackson born black knight, pissed with a white dick. Fuck him, his kids, and the pussy he came out. A shame to be black, blow your goddamn brains out. I don't care about his singing and all the songs that he sang about. Never molesting little kids, I put the thing in the lame mouth. You know what I'm talking about? It's for my black people, man. You keep your head up, wanna grow, you know?
we going to throw away our black? Because black, yeah, and I grant, I, I, I understand what the Moors are saying from a nationalistic point of view. No, black is not a nationality, but black is our originality. Black is our spirituality. Black is the very essence of our being. So for us to digest that and just throw it damn away, it's like um, just throwing away our identity. So it is okay for us to say black. Now we can get into the discussion of nationality. Because we know from the etymology of the word nationality, it comes from the French word nation. Coming from the Greek word natal, meaning birth. So whatever your mother and her geological location on the planet is your nationality. Nationality comes from the mother, not the father. It comes from the mother because the word means birth. And fathers don't birth. We participate in the process. Yes, we are important. I'm not, I'm not belittling our role, but we must know our role in life. And as men, we have to become spiritual. We have to become spiritual warriors. Not just a damn brute. We gotta become spiritual warriors. And it's very spiritual and warrior-like to yield to the feminine principle. That's what real men do. You don't have to bang on your chest and show the damn woman that you, you the boss. She will allow you to be the boss. She can allow you to do that. That's up to you two. That's what y'all discussed. I'm not suggesting that the women run everything because that's not what matriarchy is about. It's about an egalitarian civilization. It's an equality. So we're going to have some discussions and we're going to have some damn arguments. You see? But then we're going to have to come to that equality and the supreme mathematics. We call that what? Supreme equality. Because supreme means what? Most high. Meaning spiritual. Meaning the essence of all life. And the essence of all life is the goddamn triple darkness or the womb. So that womb from which we came from, that blackness, which is the womb, where we come from, is associated with our divinity. So, the more I say that the word means death. And yes, black is associated with death. They are correct. But let's understand. And poop. Black. This is another name that denotes black in the process of death. You see, on the one hand, a saw is also associated with death, but another phase of it. You see? Anubis not only has a role in receiving the dead and judging them, but also in the esoteric process of inner death. Resurrection is always preceded by death, but this death is not a physical one. It is an inner one which takes place as part of a spiritual work. It involves the death of all that is evil, inferior, and dark within oneself, such as hatred, anger, jealousy, lust. Like in the nation we call the four devils. In the, uh, in the here in, in the comedic we call it the four sons of Horus. Of these four bases here. You see these four, that's evil, inferior, uh, 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 I mean, hatred, anger, jealousy, and love. So the hatred, uh, anger, uh, jealousy, and lust must die. So in this particular scene, you see a man that is in a sarcophagus. And he is actually, the, the process of Anubis is the blackness which encompasses and absorbs these entities, right? These states of mind. So that the, the spiritual being can transform into the greater self. So yes, black does also equal death, but it also equals life. 
You see? Because in ancient Kermit and in ancient Africa, there is no concept for death in the European sense of the word. Because we believe that life is a continuous flow. We believe that life is wisdom. That life is a sweet flowing river. We believe that after this physical body, we continue to exist. Not as some fairy tale make believe. And trust me, I don't know because I, 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 I can only speculate from my experiences with the dream world. Mm -hmm. Because in the dream world, that's the cousin of death. It's a real world. They call it the fourth dimension, the astral plane. But that's only one plane because in blackness, we are multi-dimensional beings. So there are, I'm talking about multiple existences beyond this particular dense realm of existence. You see, that's where the question of people say, well, what do you think about aliens? I say, okay, yeah, they're probably out there, but I ain't concerned about them. I don't think they're concerned with me either. And I don't even think it's, 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 it's irrelevant for me to know what the hell about the, the aliens. I ain't waiting for no damn alien to come and save me. <laughs> you know, and it's funny that they're having this goddamn discussion about aliens versus Kimmy. This is a waste of goddamn time. You're wasting time and you're taking off. You see, it's like drugs. We're going to wait on the aliens, the mothership. The mothership is your melanin. That's the mothership. The battle in the sky that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad was talking about is the battle in your mind. You have to die. Your blackness has to, these qualities have to die so that the real God can resurrect himself and show himself. This is the God that will be able to take white supremacy into the next level. You see? And that's why we're all incarnated at this particular time. We are incarnated here for one goddamn particular reason. To dismantle white supremacy. Because white supremacy is the institution of male ego. That's what it is. It's the institution of male ego, and the male ego must be subdued. If the male ego is not subdued, then spirituality has no chance. Mm -hmm. You see? And so that's where you have in the parables and the symbols of Christ, the symbols of Asaph, the symbols of Heru, the symbols of Buddha. What that means is to tame the masculine for the man. Mm -hmm. We must tame masculine energy in order for us to become spiritual God-like beings. So let's move on. Um, oh, so yeah, so we said that uh, this is a death, uh, it involves the death of all that is evil, inferior, dark within oneself such as hate, Hatred, anger, jealousy, lust, etc., in a process of psychological energetic purification. That's what that black deafness means. Don't let these Negroes spook you out. See? Let's move on. This is another word that denotes black. Came to. That's what they call them de themselves. They call themselves came to. I hope I didn't go past that one page. You see? And you can see, this is the actual, and they say there ain't no damn black folks. <laughs> Only brown people. That ain't true. That is not true. This is an actual depiction of black folks. Here. Uh, yeah. Huh? You see that black man? Is that a black man or a brown man? Black. Huh? Is that a black man? Black man. <laughs> that nigga's so goddamn black, man, I hate to run into him in the alley. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see nothing but his teeth. And his eye, he got to wear that white shirt. Because you, you won't be able to see his ass. You see? So come on, Cam too. So these are words that the Africans call themselves. 
We can get into whether Africa is a Roman dialect or not. You know what I'm saying? And we can get into that. But why should we? We're not, those are distractions. These are distractions, man. We, at this meeting right here, what we're doing, if you're just tuning in on YouTube, this is the House of Consciousness on the West Coast. I'm your brother, Natu Tehudi, and these are all members which you'll meet in a moment of the House of Consciousness on the West Coast. And what we aspire to do is to put black power back into the working definition of power and, def and, and, and divinity in the minds and the hearts of our people. This is what we're here doing. You see? So we are proudly members of the Black Power Movement. I ain't worried about no goddamn status correction. I'm black. You know what I'm saying? Because goddamn, the white man don't respect. He, every treaty that he ever made, he broke it. He broke every damn treaty he ever made. So what the hell, yeah, we, we might get some, you know, if we learn law, and I'm not telling brothers not to learn law. I think you brothers should go to school for law. I think some of you should become lawyers, doctors, judges. Some things I ain't gonna say here on camera because our people are just not mature enough. We'll keep that for our closed meeting. This is just a meeting to un let the people understand what we're trying to do over here. You know, and, and by the way, yeah, we, we black power to the fullest, but understand, I want everyone to understand here, I am not teaching brothers to go out here to kill the white man. That is ridiculous. That's just natural tell who are you talking. Now, you can say kill the white man is not ridiculous. I don't want you to kill the physical white man. I want you to kill the white man inside your mind. Right, right. That's what I want you to do. Those four devils that we just talked about. Jealousy, hatred, lust, and greed. I want you to kill those four white men. Kill those four white men inside your mind and resurrect your Asar. Resurrect your hate rule. Resurrect your God status. That's what I want you to do. And if we do decide to stay here in America, then I want you brothers to become upright, perpendicular, 90 degrees on your square, and become a part of the solution, not a part of the problem. Because we got many people out here that's a part of the problem. I want y'all brothers to be men, take care of your wives, take care of your children, and men, inspire your young people. You have a responsibility to your ancestors. If you do not begin black studies and begin to transform yourselves and kill those four devils, that is your assignment to kill the four white devils in your mind. That is your responsibility to your ancestors and the responsibility to the young folks that are coming now. We have a responsibility to avenge our ancestors. And how do we do that? By resurrecting that God in ourselves. Right? And that begins with the process of love. You gotta love yourself. Number one. And you gotta love your blackness. Love that. See, because if you don't love your blackness, I can't even trust you. You ain't gonna begin to love me. And you gotta begin to see the diversity of blackness. I just began to show you how black has multi dimensions. So a brother look at me and say, man, I'm not tell who is a Puerto Rican. <laughs> Even though I'm not, but so what the hell if I was? Right. <laughs> Those are dimensions of our blackness. You know, uh, the Europeans had us going fighting against the goddamn Native American. You see? So we have to look at the many dimensions of our blackness. You know, in the nation we said there were 16 shades of black, 8 shades of brown, and 8 shades of yellow. Now that number has been multiplied by 32. 32 different damn shades with all the amalgamation going on on the planet. But that has nothing to do with that black dominant gene that is in you. Right? Let's move on. Okay. According to Dr. Carol Barnes in his book, Melanin, the chemical key to black greatness. Melanin is a molecular. Molecule. Molecule. Molecule, excuse me. But a very large, complicated, and complex living molecule. 
It has a very high molecular weight of over 200, meaning that one molecule of melanin is composed of a three-dimensional configuration of over 200 individual atoms. It is a living molecule, a life chemical, and it is charged like a battery. In fact, it operates like a battery or superconductor, yet it is heat resistant and it is characterized by a nice, sweet fragrance. So let's understand it had it is composed of a three-dimensional configuration of over 200 individual atoms. The atom is all these individual cells, which you would have to times 300, I mean 200 by 3, right? And that's how many dimensions that you would have in those individual atoms. And each one of those atoms is a universe. It is a universe. It is a living intellectual being. In your physical composition, you have billions and billions of cells. People say, oh, I'm an individual. No, you're not. You are a multiplicity of multiple beings. Because right in your physical body, now you started out as one being, one atom, right? You started out with one single cell, but that one single cell began to multiply itself. And as it multiplied itself, each one of those multiplications is an intelligent being with its own intelligence. It needs not your damn brain to tell it what to do. Your atoms work perfectly, your cells work perfectly in your body. There are billions of them, they don't even bump into each other. That's how perfect it is. Okay? So, blackness, right? Another word, melanin, which denotes black. Let's move on. Okay. So, we showed you that blackness was associated with the divinity. It was associated with the gods. Right? And the reason why is, is because your pineal gland, which regulates your, it regulates your melanin. The pineal, for all the pineal gland, first of all, the pineal gland is located in your brain, in your brain, in the center. And one of the first, it, it is one of the first of the major glands to be developed during the, digest, the uh, gestation process of the fetus. It makes its appearance within the first 45 days of the embryo development. It is the primary gland. It gets its name because it's shaped like a pine cone. According to a man once considered in his days as the greatest psychic, namely Edgar Cayce, um, we learned that the following from a book under editorship of his son regarding the penal gland. He says, the penal is the mind center where the imprint of the Christ dwells within us. Christ, hey, rule. Mm -hmm. Just, we're not going to get into that. We understand that Christ is not a person. Right. Christ is a title. Right. It's a function. It's a functionality. So, thus, it is through this gland that all things will be brought to our remembrance from the foundation of the world when we have prepared ourselves for this revelation. All right? Receptive to indigo, the pineal receives its influence from mercury, which imparts keenness of perception and an instinct for symmetry, as well as the ability to recall details. Through the higher mental faculties of the pineal, mercury instills the perception. Thus, we may observe that such a one is enabled to obtain what we call knowledge as pertaining to mental faculties. Mm -hmm. So knowledge of self is directly linked to your blackness. You understand? Because your intuitiveness and your third eye functioning get, uh, is connected to obtaining knowledge, mm -hmm. pertaining a mental faculty, your perception the way you perceive. You see? See, when you were younger, you perceived one thing one way, then as you began to mature with knowledge, you began to perceive differently. So it's just a matter of obtaining knowledge of self in order to focus your mental eye. 
Because once you get your mental eye in the right focus, then you can perceive a thing from a lower degree or a higher degree. It all depends on your focus. You see? That's why we hear we say, you know, get focused, man. You know what I'm saying? You get focused. Okay. Here we go. So, the Naga, right? The serpent, the Uraeus, which these two was the symbols of two goddesses, Nebket and Aset, or Azit. Nebket, the vulture, and Aset. Then later, later on, it became known as the Uraeus. But from the earliest pre-dynastic time, these were the two goddesses that ruled Egypt. Okay? Kemet, if you will. Tamera. And this particular one here, centered in the middle of the forehead, is symbolic to your pineal gland because it's directly influenced through your melanin and the spiritual energy that they call the kundalini energy. And so right here in your brain, this is where the God force resides. Right there, your pineal gland. That is your transphysical doorway into the unseen world. And that is regulated by your blackness, your melanin. Okay? So, so black means life, and black also means death. It has a duality. So let's move on. Melanin comes from the name of the goddess Melanie or Mela, uh, Melanos. Melanos. From the root word Mela, meaning black. She was also known as the goddess Aphrodite. And here is the black stone that was sim the symbol of her divinity. The same that they had at the Kaaba. This represented the goddess. That black stone. But it also represents your pineal gland. It also represents your melanin. It also represents your blackness. It represents your birth, your life, and your death. It is the cycle of life. So the cycle of life is black. Let's move on. <laughs> Black power. Want to give a shout out to my brother Sarnella? We're going to give Sarnella a round of applause. <laughs> Black power to my brother Sarnella because if it wasn't for this Black man, this Black man would never have been up in front of a camera doing this work. We want to thank Sarnella for allowing us to make the House of Consciousness a franchise, and now we're here on the West Coast, thanks to Sister Almanette. Okay. Allowing us, and my brother YG Priest, you cannot forget the, uh, the mix master on the wheels of steel. <laughs> the man with the camera, he knows the real deal and he knows how to build. Yes. Right. That's why our videos look ill. <laughs> that's a fact, my nigga. <laughs> like power. So that's my boy Sarnetta. This was at the debate with me and Nas. Uh, this is when I first came out. Actually at the Wesley Muhammad oh, debate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know. And uh, that was crazy because I didn't even never did a lecture before or a, 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 a debate with a PhD. So I, I'm gonna give a black power and round of applause to my brother Wesley Muhammad. I don't think me and him got beef, but I, I got a lot of love for that brother because um, Wesley Muhammad, little did he know while I was on that stage, I was learning from him. Mm -hmm. So I'm humble enough to say that. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, I lost the debate only on points of merit because I went off the topic, but I won my argument. <laughs> you can say what you want to say, and I'm not attacking the nation of Islam because I'm not, I'm not going that route anymore. I, I think it's foolish for us to continue to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be the cause to bring down another black man. That's right. 
You know, and what whatever Miss Louis Farrakhan is doing today, I don't even got the goddamn right to really understand what this brother is doing at his particular age, all the work that Mr. Louis Farrakhan did in this community. If it wasn't a Mr. Louis Farrakhan, there probably wouldn't be another a brother natural to Hootie. Because when I was a young man, I used to emulate the way that brother talked. You know what I'm saying? And the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. If there was no honorable Elijah Muhammad, it wouldn't have been that bold, bald-headed black man. Mm -hmm. You understand? Khalid mm -hmm. Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Right? Khalid Muhammad. I said. You know, there wouldn't have been a Minister Farrakhan. There wouldn't have been a Malcolm X. There wouldn't have been the Father of Allah. Right? Black power to the nation of God's nerves. You know what I'm saying, you? And even this whole ideal address, we got to shout out the West Coast to the Black Panthers. Right? Black Panthers. You know what I'm saying, you? So now that we define black, we're talking about power. You know? And then we're going to get, and power just means the ability or right to control people, which this is the dictionary's definition. And I will show you the evil in that. Mm -hmm. See, the definition, see, the ability or the right to control people or things. Right. We gotta think about that for a minute. Right. A person or, 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 excuse me, political control of a country or area, a person or organization that has a lot of control and influence over other people's or organizations. See, we gotta begin to, as we begin to take power, our power comes from our blackness. That's where we get our power from. So when we say black power, we now understand the word black and how it connects us to the creator, creatrix, which is the supreme mind. Right, I ain't talking no spooky shit. I'm trying to connect all of our people, whether you be Christian, whether you be Hebrew, Israelite, Moor, Anubian, whatever group you are in, I'm talking to you, to my niggas in the street. You know, some people ain't gonna like to hear me say nigger, but those are my goddamn niggas. You know what I'm saying to you? My G's over in LA, Compton, up in New York, my blood, my Crips, over in Chicago, my folk, my disciples, all of them. All of them is included in this black power. How the hell are we gonna leave them out? Cannot. <laughs> and wait a minute. Even the niggas that's talk, talking about my um my, my girls that's uh shaking their booties. I'm not forsaking them. So let's move it along real quick. Okay. Um, we still on camera? Yeah, but we gotta wrap it up because my footage is getting low. Oh, okay. Black power, number one, is our ability to get in tune with spiritual awareness. Uh, unity. You and I find a common identity in each other. Acquire. You must make a lifelong commitment to yourself to lifelong learning. Knowledge of self is black power. Okay? Maintenance. This shows that our lack of economic power is not because of our disability. Rather, it is because we've been taught to maintain a particular mindset. This mindset consists of a set of principles that prevents the acquisition of maintenance of wealth. Okay? Defense. The three main weapons that we have against white supremacy is exposure, Unity and love. You see? So, this is only part one of this discussion because there are other areas that we did not discuss, but I wanted to simplify it. You see? So, black power is our ability. That's number one. There's a spiritual awakening. You have to have a spiritual awakening. When you get into the conscious community, man, you got to transform, man. You can't be, still be the same old nigga that you came in at. You see, so that means there's got to be some transforming and our unity. Our unity is through the love, man. The love of self and the love of you and I. So through that, we find common identity. We must acquire. You must make a commitment. So everybody in here, all of us, we raise our fists and we say black power, right? Because we have to commit to a lifelong process of knowledge of self, right? Maintenance. We have to maintain 
And we have to maintain black power in order to create an economical system for ourselves. And defense, the three main weapons of defense we have is exposure. Exposure is exposing the goddamn lies. You see what I'm saying, you? Unity and love, unifying through our blackness and loving ourselves. I don't gotta teach you to kill a white man, I gotta teach you how to love your black self. Right. If you love your black self, you will kill for what the hell you love. Right. Right. Black power. And lastly, <laughs> black power, when you do brother polite, take a lesson. Black power. Throwing your goddamn fist in the air, you understand? It connects us to our goddamn divinity. To the original man, the Trump. You understand? Patar. And Patar means the opening, which means the womb. So the black woman is God. Black power. Black power. Black power. Black power. So again, um, out there, we just want to give y'all a brief little understanding of what we're doing here. And I thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, this is this is your brother Natural Tell Hootie. Everybody get get on the camera, man. Talk to the people. Talk to the people, man. We here, West Coast. How's it going? Throw it up, throw your gang side, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Nigga rolling, neighborhood, nigga. It's out who you rolling. How you doing? I'm that. Oh, okay, I'm rolling. That's a good gang side right here. There it is, black power. Black power.